listening to yet another episode of Smash the Bug. I'm your host, Joseph Maxwell, and I am joined by a different guest than normal. Typically, we talk about bugs and our fights and and trying to get uh, problems solved as quickly as possible. Today, it's a bit of a different conversation. You see, about, was it about a month ago or so, there was a letter that was released into the community, and it there's a lot of reactions on both sides of the fence about Mage OS. And so I have the honor of bringing on somebody from Adobe, a very special person whose name is Eric Irway, uh, who's been very involved in these conversations. Uh, more or less, it seems representing a lot of what Adobe's voice into the community is. And we're bringing him onto this podcast to get answers and to have a really frank, candid conversation about the state of affairs when it relates, as it specifically relates to open source and the future of it, what's going on with it, because, hey, we all want answers. So I always like to throw out as well, make sure that you subscribe to the Swift Otter Inc. channel on YouTube or the Smash the Bug podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or Stitcher or Spotify. Where you want to find us, we will be found there. So our guest here today is Eric Irway. He is the group product manager at Adobe. Basically, he oversees Magento open source. And Eric, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, yeah, I'm really excited to have you on, to, on on this broadcast today. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, absolutely. So Joseph, thank you so much for having me. So yeah, I you know I think many of you, many of the people here probably know me, but some of them don't. So my name is Eric. Of course, I am group product manager for what we call our experiences uh, at, at Adobe Commerce. And so what that means is the shopper, developer, and merchant experiences. And so I've been with Magento now Adobe for almost seven years. And and again, I think you know the you know, really the the energy in the community is is really been been something that is that is I think taken by storm, but I think in a very very good way. And so we're encouraged by what we've seen, what we've heard, and, and kind of started to involve myself with the Magento Association about six plus months ago, seeing kind of what you know, seeing kind of where that next chapter might be. And so I think you know fully understand there's a lot of questions, but I think as I've talked to folks like yourself and others, uh, you know, there's, there's, I think there's a lot of potential here. Uh, I think I mentioned kind of in the pre-show, we've got our open source task force kickoff here happening uh, really in less than an hour. And we're going to have these kind of conversations. We're going to work through some of the things. Some of it's going to be communication. Some of it's going to be transparency. Some of it's going to be the product. Uh, and that's okay. Right. And so I, I think as we've had these conversations for me, I think it has a lot to do with uh, w- with really our ability to to talk with each other uh, mm-hmm. and really uh, kind of rekindle the aspects of the community that are really the the, the non functional pieces, the parts that we've always I, I think have cherished, the parts that for for myself have been kind of the magical parts since joining again some you know, in some cases almost seven years ago and my first imagine and things like that. Mm-hmm. And so I'm happy to help. You know, my role though is that, you know really is that of experiences, but developer experience from a product standpoint is just as important as as merchant experience as well. That's right. That's right. Um, one thing that we talked about yesterday was how COVID has affected this. And ultimately, I think w- part of the glue that bound the Magento, global Magento community together was these conferences, these shows, whatever you want to call them, i.e. imagine, meet Magento to an extent and you know, th- more of the regional uh, uh, get togethers, if you want to call it that. So, and, I, and I've wondered how much that has affected this whole conversation, not being able to be in person and having that exposure to Adobe engineers, uh, product managers, that sort of thing at a, at a more of a higher level in a in-person format. I, I think you're absolutely right. And I know in, in some ways it seems very obvious, but when you start to unpack really what that means, in many ways, our, our community is a product in its own right, right? And so, you know, and like with any product, any technologies, there've been changes, there've been new names, mm-hmm. new faces. Uh, and I think people are really trying to understand how they can connect, how they can really be part mm-hmm. of this community. Again, both functionally and non-functionally. And the events were a really great way to do so. And I think, you know, we, we've had many events, you know, since then, we've had many virtual, remote, and other kind of alternatives to date that have been very best effort, but it's very different. You know, even talking with you and, and talking with folks even the last couple of weeks versus kind of the, the green dot on the laptop going through the presentation and really not getting that conversation going, right? It's, That's it's, right. It's very different. We've, we've done our best, right? I, I, we, should, we should take, you know, take note there, mm-hmm. but like, you know, what, what does it mean to take, take advantage of some of the things that I think for me were some of the most important conversations of the committee, like Dev Exchange, where we would have a topic at Imagine or one of the events and it would just flow out into the hallways. You've got six tables talking about maybe remote work or maybe some of the newer technologies that are coming in or, or what have you. And we just, it's, it's harder to do that when, when, when so much of those, so many of those conversations are, 
uh, mm-hmm. are a little bit more distributed and just the, just That's not right. as in person. So yeah, it's it, it is. It, but I think you know we, we we need to look at different areas. We need to find you know different ways, get creative. There are communities that are doing a good job of this, but I think we're also starting to see slowly a return to this as well. So I'm really hopeful to have and see more of that in time. But I'm, we're, we're not going to let that hold us up. So. Well, and I'll just say this. Here's to hoping that uh, we are able to get together next year at Adobe Summit. So yes. I'm looking forward to if that ever if that works out, that will be really cool. So that will be nice. All right. So let's talk about you said the open source task force is meeting. I think you said for the first time here in a short period of time. And yes. I greatly appreciate you being willing to chat here. Um, how how do you see this fitting into the bigger picture, right? Because we have the community that has some complaints. We have Adobe who is, you know, has made a massive investment, wants to, uh, for good reason, wants to protect that investment. Mm -hmm. And it seems like the open source task force is kind of some of the middle, middle man to, uh, to hear the complaints here and to kind of be a little bit of a liaison, at least from what Mm -hmm. I'm understanding from the exterior. So, but from your perspective at Adobe, how, how do you perceive this to all go down? Yes, I think for me, it's really about the beginnings of a, of a longer term collaboration, right? Uh, mm-hmm. And again, this is in, in some ways very familiar for those who who have seen some of the change in the community. And so I'm anticipating, again, back to the kind of the functional and non-functional uh, points that like, in many ways, it's, it's a matter of mm-hmm. catching up to those changes. Uh, as I've heard, and I've talked to many folks like yourself, but maybe even some of the stronger voices who've been you know, who really have had some angst about uh, what what this has looked like? A lot of it is just to change the communication. It's you know, it's like you know, is it Adobe doing X, Y, and Z? Is it open source? You know, going away? Oh my goodness! Like right like, when you talk to me, it's like no, it's not going away. Yes, it's different though. And I think you know where where I've you know where I've kind of brought myself into this has a lot to do with you know my my. You know, a great team behind me that has been working on some of these pieces that are that, that are starting to be kind of a new orientation of this, whether it's PDA Studio and Venya, GraphQL, and then even the, the open source of, of Page Builder, which quite honestly wasn't incredibly popular uh, for us to do so. So that was months in the making. And so we are you know, changing some orientation and looking at different ways for us to participate. But again, we're, you know, we're not always out there. We've got some new names and faces. It's hard to do this in some cases, 280 characters at a time. And it's hard to do this, uh, you know, it's hard to do this at events where it's like, okay, here's the new thing. Great. Now what? Like, and we've got to think about things like contribution days. And so we're trying to figure out how we restart uh, a little bit of that. We we actually had some success last week at Meet Magento Romania with a handful of contributions, right? And so finding kind of Finding the DNA, DNA that's worked well with this as we've changed changed the orientation, and I think one of the things we also talked about yesterday is is really the 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 uh, really the decentralization of the communities, which is not necessarily a bad thing. The the, pro- the products, the technologies mm-hmm. that are out there, we saw this on the storefront side with things like View Storefront, but you're seeing this with Whova and a few others, and these are all good things. These are all as our products and the technologies become. Know, a bit more headless, a bit more composable mm-hmm. and distributed. We've got to yes. find ways to connect in with these. And then in some cases, connect even more, much like historically we have with the PHP communities. What does that look like for React? Like, I would love to have that conversation with the React community and and, and figure out how do we, uh, you know, how, how do we have that same, uh, how do we see, basically see that same force multiplier in the way that we've seen, you know, those community members come into Magento for the very first time, which we are. Same thing with Vue and others, right? And so I think there's a That's lot right. ahead of us, but it's, it, it is, you know, it, we've got to find ways to kind of talk through some of these things. That's what I'm hopeful. For. Back to your question, like, that's what I'm really hopeful for. But yes, there's other aspects of like how do we look at innovation, creating those sandboxes where you know we've got some great ideas that 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 may not necessarily be uh, you know a priority on one side and not the other. But like, what is how do we take advantage of like the the new contribution model uh, from from mm-hmm. the teams and in a way that can be distributed, grouped, packaged, so that innovation, which has always been at the core of Magento, can still exist and can still thrive, but maybe a little bit differently. And so I think it's a matter of just keeping up with some of the changes, finding ways they work, and then you know treating the community as a product and figure out okay, what is the feedback about this? What do we think about this? Let's talk about it instead of talk at and uh, and maybe make. And I think there's an openness to making some adjustments along the way. We're not bullying in with what these are, but we are, there are, there is change. And, and, and I think that's okay. We're seeing that already with the, in the community and we, and in many ways, there's a lot of room for that. So. Definitely. Okay. One thing that I've heard rumors of, and some people say it's going to happen. Some people say it's not going to happen. So I, I'm curious, like mm-hmm. the final word, like you're, you're from Adobe, like these, you, you will know, <laughs> uh, is about relate in relation to the future of the Magento Association and mm-hmm. the taking over the development or 
more or less ownership of open source. Can you speak to that? Like, again, is, is this is this a rumor that needs to be just put to bed or is this there's actually some truth to this? Yeah, so I think it is a rumor to be put to bed. Um, and I think there are good reasons why that might be a, an interesting option. You certainly see this with other communities like the Drupal Association, mm-hmm. which has that ownership. But at this, at this point, and this is this is on high, not just myself, you know, we have no uh, we have no plans to, to deprecate the monolith. We have no, and uh, in, in what we're doing around open source, we have no de- no plans to turn that over. And if anything, it's really about finding those connection, uh, you know, mm-hmm. those connection points and what that looks like. So yeah, that's I, I, I can like anything. We've kind of looked at all options across the table. There's pros and cons to a lot of these, but I think where where we start to see this is is a relationship where like at, at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Customers and merchants really care about key things that may not be the first priorities for you know new and interesting innovations that are in the community, like security, like PCI compliance, like quality, performance. They're okay. they're all kind of there, um, but there's ultimately a, a commitment on our side, a commitment on our teams um, that we that we still need to continue establishing and maintaining a lean core as part of it. So yeah, we don't have any. We have no plans, uh, th- despite some of the conversation, no plans to quote unquote mm-hmm. turn that over. And if anything, we want to work. Uh, with and through the uh, the association and some of the great work that Josh and team have have re- you're starting to see more of that around things like elections around things like yes. other ways of participation to to make sure your voice is heard and that's that was the intent when that was set up and, and in many ways I think we want to I don't want to say we we, we want to reinvigorate that on both sides we need to do more of it from the Adobe side the association needs to to help you know to and they they've been facilitating some of this change and, mm-hmm. and really make the most out of this and I think that's where a lot of this comes from when we start talking things. Again, in the conversation of that, even with some of the uh, uh, some of the, the loudest voices, when you talk to people individually, go, okay, I get it, I understand, this is what this is, and there's usually a surprise, like, oh, okay, that makes more sense now versus right. where it may be seen out of context. But yeah, short short answer is no no plans to uh, to turn over open source. We've got a lot of work there, and we, if anything, we're investing a lot more in things like Page Builder and some of the net new work um, today. Excellent. Okay. That makes sense. All right. So one of the bigger concerns that I've heard coming from the community, if I was to just like pick one of them, was is, is about the difficulty of contributions, you know, mm-hmm. and there's been some really sharp people. I was just talking with Yvonne uh, Schipperny, um from Netherlands and he was talking and so he runs a single person consulting company, mm-hmm. Ecom Dev. Yep. And and he's uh, and, and he was specifically talking about this issue. And, and I've heard it from quite a few others, like really like this dude's one of the sharpest oh, yeah. knives in the drawer when it comes to performance. And so, right. but it, but it's frustrating and difficult for them to get these type of con- contributions into Magento for one reason or another. And it, to them, it feels like big layers of bureaucracy. What can you speak to about solutions for this type of a problem? Because it is an open source project, yep. but if you can't actually get stuff into there, it's... <laughs> Kind of open yeah. source, but kind of not as well. Does that make sense? It does. I think there's two ways. And Yvonne, yeah, continues to do great work in the community. We've I've, she's been around for a long, long time in here. And I think you know when I think about performance and I think about the 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 need here again as a product, there are I would say there's some process aspects of this and product aspects to this. And so you know when thing when we look at things like performance, you know the first thing I think of is like you know Yvonne. I wish, be talking to him and say, okay, what what change, what you know, what PR, what work do you have to contribute to here? And I think if you were to look around, you know, there have been some changes in faces, and so maybe the first the calls that he would be making are uh, maybe differently uh, from that. And I think there's some 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 change in process, some change in faces mm-hmm. that we're all I think wanting to reintroduce ourselves. And you're starting to see that in the last couple of weeks. Some some folks like uh, you know Nicole Cornelson from the engineering team, Chris Hedge, who is going to be doing the he, he's uh, he's my director. He's going to be doing the keynote at MA Connect next week. We are okay. all say, starting to say and you're starting to see a lot of the same things. And so I think part of it is just making sure that we're giving the right attention the right way, but also growing and scaling it. And what we mean by that is, you know, for something like that, or maybe something that may not be as, let's, let's say, as critical as performance, because we always want to make sure that we're working towards performance. We're, yeah. we, we've, um, you know, we, we basically re, re, like restarted a, a community uh, a community contribution model that is a bit more distributed. And I think the way that we kind of described it yesterday is this idea of like the old, kind of Windows systems, service packs types of things where you, you you don't want to hold back innovation, but look at it in a way that can be packaged and consumed very quickly for you know at points of need. But I'll tell you what, for the things that are really important, like performance or security or other areas, we've got to f- find ways to bring those back. And so I think one of the one of the good things in even the last couple of weeks is is it, we're starting to reinvest in and starting to look at uh, turnaround times for PRs where amidst all the changes and especially in a, in a year, really a year and a half without even contribution days or other, you know, other accelerators into this process, um, 
we haven't quite had that yet. And so I think there's there's a bit of a uh, an acknowledgement there to 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 invest and give more attention to those. But quite honestly, I also want to make sure that we don't we don't lose folks like him with some of the ideas and and even the suggestions and contributions he has. And so how do we grow and scale that amidst all the things that are happening? Where we're still gonna ha- we still have a very you know a lean open source product. There still will be innovation. And how do you look at that channel or that mechanism you know, between forward and backward compatibility that makes the most sense? And that's really where the hard part is. And we're going to bring in, uh, we've got a couple of architects will be part of this um, open source task force to help us understand what that looks like. I'm a product person, so I, you know, it's easier said than done. But I understand that like, in consumer context, this is all very much possible. You see this with browsers where like the Chromium engine you know, can, be man- you know, can be manifested inside of uh, what's happening at Amazon and Microsoft and even mm-hmm. Chrome itself. And it serves many, many needs, sometimes with different faces, right? And so what does that look that's like? Right. And so I think, for me, I think that's that's where the potential is. I'm only looking at it, though, from a certain perspective. We've got smart folks like Igor and others behind the scenes are starting to unpack, like, what does this look like? How do, you know, and, and but I'm also want, making sure that we're, we're not overlooking the non-functional pieces, which is, hey, let's have some transparency. Who do we go to for X, Y, and mm-hmm. Z? What does this yes. process look like? Uh, and there's just been a lot of that that I think we're all catching up to. Uh, for that one, so we're looking at it from both both sides of that. And yeah, I'd, again, I want to find a way where he, you know, he can call anyone, you know, any one of us, and he knows who to call and how to raise these things, and, and for us to grow and scale um, where it makes mm-hmm. sense. Yeah, Especially that makes performance. sense. <laughs> well, and one thing I do want to call out is with all the kind of back and forth, Igor's uh, comments or his well, it's a lot longer than a comment. His blog posts. Yep. We're going to put those in the uh, the description or the show notes for this episode. Mm-hmm. Those have been really helpful, like because I think one of the issues, and and it comes back to every, even especially in politics, like you have two divides or more pe- groups of people, and and this the hard part is when those conversations aren't happening, then you, both sides usually have really good reasons for what why they think it's just that it's easier to throw mud than actually get in there and say okay, so why are you doing it this way? And in Igor's, uh posts have been really informative, like yep. super technical, presenting the reasons. And I remember uh, going to some of those hackathon days at uh, Imagine, back when it was called Imagine, and how insightful it was to be able to sit there and talk with core engineers. Some of the things that I thought were honestly pretty dumb, it's like, oh, okay, maybe if I don't agree with it now, or I still don't agree with it fully, it's it makes a heck of a lot more sense because of all this reasoning that goes in behind it. And so, uh, yeah, those conversations are, are super valuable. Um, they are. And I think the access is really that part of the community that, that I, I think if I were to look at this in a different context, I think is what mm-hmm. I know is seemingly valued the most. I mean, take another example, like I don't have a Tesla, but maybe a, I have a Jeep. Like imagine having access to the Jeep engineers or the product people and like, you know, understanding, you know, how you might be able to influence it. And that would, that's not, those aren't necessarily, you know, open source projects, right? And so like, what does that no, look like? Not at all. What does that influence yeah. looks like as part of that? And I think if you look at the, look at the problem with different contexts, mm-hmm. it's really about that connection. And I think that's where we need to find ways to, in some ways to, to revitalize that, especially with some of the changes. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's good. So with all of this, where is Magento open source headed? And I think yep. one aspect of this in some ways, it seems like open source has hit a level of maturity, maybe mm-hmm. in, it seems like in Adobe's eyes. And of course, I think this is where some of the frustration comes in. Community says, well, look at the list of issues on GitHub, look at the list yep. of PRs. So w- the community doesn't think it's hit a level of uh, maturity, but perhaps Adobe does. So then the community is saying, so where's the continued development happening with this? Uh, because, ult- well, and let me just say this, another frustration has been that issues are closed without full uh, testing or like PRs of someone I was talking to recently was talking about how, uh, for example, like upgrading from 242 to 243 or some like upgrades, you know, you request a 243 instance. And of course, you're not going to get this problem with the data migration that happened Mm -hmm. as from 242 to 243. So QA rejects it, says we can't find any problem. There was no problem here. So what is your thoughts as far as especially focusing on the future of open source um, and and where that's headed? Yeah, so that's that's a really good question. Um, I guess this is one of those things where like a dev exchange, we would unpack this, talk through it, bring in experts, et cetera. But I think if you've got, like ultimately we're working towards a core and, and, and mm-hmm. sometimes we refer to it as a lean core that I think has, you know, has established itself as a, as a really, uh, really mature product. But I think 
And again, I, I'm reflecting on some of the things we talked about yesterday, where like if you even look at the re- release notes for two, three, two, four, and others, the bulk of the, the like in the net new feature functionality will come in kind of one of two camps. MSI, which had been in the community for a long time, got it mm-hmm. checked. That is that is evolved. Made you know was made as part of core. Um, some yeah. of the other open source projects like Studio, Venya, what have you, like those have evolved but have been in, independent. Um, a lot of the net new work that you'll see feature functionality though is, is has already been over a year or so. Uh, SaaS based, be kind of featured like and, and done so in a very independent way that actually keeps you from having to worry about uh, making major upgrades uh, on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. And so one of the things you'll hear from Chris again, who's my director, but others is this idea around reducing that load for uh, for for merchants to have to you know r- really have to think about their next upgrade every single time. And so I think even with the core, there are net feature functionalities, whether it's uh, you know whether SaaS based services um, or or really this decomposition that's happening where you start to see, you know, the front end, the API, the back end um, kind of done separately. The same thing is kind of happening in the community. And so we use this phrase decentralization. And it's like, oh my gosh. Um, but it's not a bad thing. It's, it's, it's with, how do we, so how do we connect the people in the same ways that the products are happening based on all the innovation that's happening in this pocket? So again, not unique to our, even our platform, but as you see some inspiring things from Whova, from, I can view, view storefront on the on the front end on the API side. There's a lot of really interesting work around Apollo and different strategies there. And on the back end, it's it's still the same core, right? And so we're all building from a lot of the same things, extending it different ways, but we're doing it very differently. And so I think mm-hmm. I do think there's feedback in the process that makes that that loop a, a bit more effective based on the feedback that I've heard traditionally. So I, I do want to address that. I think we'd be addressing that even outside of the open source task force. You know, I do think we need to continue to make the, the case for more help to review, extend, what have you, and look at some interesting ways to distribute that. Um, you know, we're not necessarily going to be, you know, hiring 2000 people to help look through and comb through each one. I'd love to, by the way, if anybody's listening. Yeah. Um, but if we're not, uh, and so we've got to be, we've got to be creative around what that looks like. But I, I would, I would really use the word yeah, and think about the word decentralized. Uh, with us and what that means. And, and that can be hard. That's a big change when all this happens. But that's still the same core with open source that, you know, we have no plans to, uh, you know, end of life, end of support um, at, the, at this point. And that's still the same core everybody knows. But again, reflecting at 2324, when you look at it, go, it's just a couple things here. And then, yes, there's some fixes, some some other areas, quality, performance, et cetera. But that goes back, you know, in some cases, almost two years, right? And so we've been kind of mm-hmm. doing that. But so we've got to find our way there. But it's maybe not as different as people had and, and anticipated. It's just done in a different way. Okay, interesting. Okay, um, and so is do, is there like a roadmap that we can look to for yep. specific uh, features? Because like what you're saying, it's decentralized in a lot of ways. It seems like most of the in uh, updates, like you were saying, for open source, the core there is mostly bug fixes, some improvements, performance related. And so in a lot of ways, it does seem like maturity has been achieved there. But then looking out in, in, in the investments going into GraphQL and PWA and uh, I guess those in, in page builder as well. So a yep. lot of front end heavy uh, performance optimizations then. Yeah, I think in broad strokes, I would say yes, but there's always going to be areas of opportunity to extend where we feel like there's need, right? And, and that's, that's where there's going to be a balance and you have to think about like at what layer does that make the most sense? Um, and I think coming back to the roadmap, one of the things that we're going to be sharing um, as soon as next week is, you know, what does the next cut of that look like for open source? And so I think there's some key improvements that are happening for 244 in March. Uh, mm-hmm. Like uh, like PHP 8.1, uh, which is nice. going to be in beta uh, very yes. very soon, um, and uh, so that's a big impact, right? Even though it feels like mm-hmm. it's just a framework upgrade, there's a lot of lift to that. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of options that gives developers just in that one piece alone. But of course, a lot of work to make sure that you know that that it, uh, uh, that you know that everything is tested and still works well, and that we are taking advantage of the performance and the kind of the developer experience aspects. Um, so that's one example. The other areas are things like GraphQL. We've got some planned work around B2B uh, coverage happening in 244. And like, what is the best way to communicate that? And what we started to do is look at how other open source platforms, enterprise level, start to communicate that. And, and kind of on one of the spectrum is this feature by this date, this feature by this date. And surprisingly, nobody does that. It's like that in most extreme cases. But on the other side, it's Hey, we've got a few things coming soon, which is not helpful. We've we've had we've, we've kind of done that in the past with, with GitHub projects for open source, and we had it, but we didn't get a lot of feedback about it. It wasn't as practical, and so I'm partnering with their DevDocs team. I just saw a cut of it actually last night on on something that maps the release calendar to basically a in progress planned type of scenario. So you know, a uh, a smart person could look at it and say, Hey, it, you know, PHP eight one is coming, and and 
you'll very you'll quickly say, well, it's probably going to be for two four four in March, and and see that you know that's being worked on. It's pro- you, with 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 pretty pretty uh, easy assumptions, you can be able to see that alignment, and that's actually pretty consistent to some of the larger projects we've seen, even in commerce, and how they manage uh, roadmap communications. And so we're going to start with that, but again, treat that that process itself as a product, bring feedback into it and, and make sure it serves the needs of both. And that's, uh, that falls definitely within my, you know, my organization's court as it relates to even engineering and others for that. And so you'll, you'll see more on that, uh, more on that point. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. That's good. That's good. Um, so let's, let's talk about mage OS for a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. it's, it's a, it's obviously the, yeah, it comes from some of the community's frustration. They want to see improvements added in performance, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they, their goal is to make it both backwards and forwards compatible. I read Igor's blog post about that, about the difficulty that that would represent. And I get that. Um, as kind of a personal example here, <clears throat> a frustration that I've had with, uh, Magento itself is the product repository, and I've been working yep. on building a new implementation of that that's significantly faster. But f- actually, for me, it's like, do I really want to go through the effort of getting a pull request as opposed to just loading right. this in a module and releasing it out into the wild? Mm. So what would you say as far as some of these ideas that people have, uh, maybe they're not necessarily in alignment with uh, the core engineering team, what they want to do or their, their, their feedback or concerns, et cetera. Like, how would you say the uh, members of the community should uh, call it express or implement these, these ideas that are probably not going to be implemented maybe ever uh, into the actual core product? Yeah, no, I think I, I definitely understand the perspective on that one, maybe even some of the frustration. I think it kind of goes two ways. So I think we we owe it to ourselves in the community to talk about the themes or kind of the interest, uh, the interest areas of what contribution looks like. And so that's something we need to kind of detail. Performance is, a, is an easy one. Quality, um, quality uh, also an easy one. But like when you talk about something like the product repository, just, you know, I, you know, similar to the Yvonne concept, like let's let's find a way or a channel to have that conversation, right? It's not a it's not mm-hmm. a trivial change, and yes, that may have some from an engineering standpoint may have its own considerations to incorporate, refactor, what have you. Like we've got to look at the co- it's basically look at everything almost as an investment or with, with value. But if you're if, if you're saying that that could bring more performance and something that hasn't been you know has, hasn't been seen in, in certain certain amount of time, then we don't want to dis- I I don't want to discourage that, and so let's find ways mm-hmm. to scale especially for these meaningful kind of material changes where it makes sense. And if we find that it doesn't make sense because of X, Y, and Z, as far as uh, compatibility or refactor or quality or testing or things like that, let's have that conversation then. And so I'd rather encourage those types of kind of material contributions, those discussions versus what, you know, sometimes when I've had a chance to review, you know, quite a, me- quite a few of these in the past where there'd be like P3s that would move a field by a couple pixels that would be great. But like, we really should be thinking about what you're, you know what you're contributing yeah. and what you're like what you're trying to do as well assuming we're not going to get and again we're, we're still listening and anyways listening 2,000 people to help you know with a lot of these things like that's i think it's finding that blend and really looking at it as a product uh to prioritize that where we think we're still going to get material lift on these shared priorities and these shared themes so, that, so i don't want to discourage that but also want to you know we have to also, also have to be very i think it, it's it's up to us uh to to be clear about the areas of interest as well page builder of course is one pwa graphql those are the easy ones but like what are the other things? Let's dig in more on what performance and other areas might be, so that so that nobody, so people are spending the right time in the right places uh, for the, for the greater good. So that's my hope. Yeah. So it sounds like in in the long, the big, the grand scheme of things, that uh, a lot of the stuff is still being worked out. I assume uh, task the task force is going to be a driving force, hopefully behind a lot of this stuff, uh, and we can we'll be looking forward to hearing specifically how how things are going to be playing out like you said like these communication channels like i I somehow somewhere probably i assume that would be published or made available or recommendations or something along those lines so that the community knows how to get a hold of great people like you yeah and and that i think that's where the communications help and i think honestly we are we're also looking for feedback as well like i don't think we can again we don't we can't solve the problem to 280 characters in time but i don't think a series of newsletters and blog posts and this and that like what does that mean and who's doing it well and how should we how should we do it does it mean we need to be more present and participate we're trying some things there um as you're starting to see in the last couple of weeks and those are kind of already in play again with some new feet new new names and faces but like 
let's find out also what works best. There's a lot of information being thrown at people. So I, I have a lot of empathy for developers in our community that are having to process this. They may have over, you know, they may have, uh, you know, may have not seen that we've, you know, we've changed the, uh, you know, we changed the model from you know 30% to 15% for extensions in a marketplace, or we started to introduce subscriptions unless they happen to catch Igor's tweet like two weeks ago and people talking about like what is the best way of doing that. And so that's I'm particularly interested in that. It's really about like information management, really, uh, and what developer experience looks like. We're going to do our best, but please keep us honest if there are better ways to do it. Um, as we've seen some of these changes to to, to do so, there's a lot of people around here mm-hmm. um, who care quite a bit about. Um, seeing this succeed, but we also want to make sure that we're we're hitting the mark on these things as well. So Magento Connect is going to be a great example of that. Uh, you know, on the twenty first, you've got uh, the keynote from Chris Hedge, who is my director, and he's going to talk a little bit about uh, with uh, probably broader context everything we, we we've said here. Basically, our commitment to open source, the developer ecosystem, uh, and we've got a couple other sessions uh, happening as well around uh, contribution uh, from a, from a doc standpoint. The new model. So Stas is going to walk through that. Uh, 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 Elena is going to talk about page builder, uh, and we've got a couple other areas as well. And so you'll you'll see it in, in many ways. But again, with with the fire hose of information that's out there, I, I get it. I know it's a lot, and so I want to find ways that we stay true to the helping to manage through that, knowing that again, in this decentralized kind of model, there are other aspects that people have to care uh, to keep up with as well. So let us know, and please let me know. Our our, our you know my, my office is very open, uh, and we're available uh, all the time. So. Excellent. Excellent. Eric, I appreciate you coming on. Thank you. I know you have a deadline. Really appreciate you coming on, sharing your uh, your thoughts here, your feedback. This has been, been very helpful for me and I hope it's helpful for the community as well. Uh, and so, yeah, thank you for taking your time. Of course. Thank you for having me. And then again, let's uh, let's keep this going and I'll uh, I'll continue to bring some, maybe some new friends uh, very as good. well who uh, will participate as well. So we're, we appreciate what you do for the community as well. So thanks again for the opportunity. My pleasure. My pleasure. Well, that was absolutely fantastic podcast here uh, chatting with Eric Irway. I'll make sure to reach out to him if you have uh, questions or concerns, whatever. He's available on Twitter and um, other channels as well. Uh, But the one thing I would urge you listeners, the Magento community as a whole, is we need to approach Adobe as the people that work at Adobe. Uh, not just looking at like shareholders who are out to make a whole bunch of money. And instead, these are people we're interacting with. They are managing, stewarding this product. And as we are able to have good, friendly relationships with them, we're going to make progress as opposed to just throwing mud all the time. Um, And so make sure to reach out. Uh, As you heard with this conversation, Er Eric is a great person. Uh, Reach out to him. Um, DM have a conversation if you run into him at a conference or something like that. Uh, ask him those questions that you that you have burning on your in, on your mind as opposed to just throwing fire their direction and hoping for change as a result of that. It's just, well, it might happen, but it's just not going to be <laughs> as a friendly, good relationship as we really need in order to see Magento Open Source thrive the way that we all want to see it thrive. So thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to this podcast. I hope you found it beneficial and helpful. Uh, Look forward to more content coming from Smash the Bug.